Our next finalist, um, his name is Mr. Afik Abdul Hamid, an astronomer attached with the University of Malaya Radio Cosmology Research Lab, and he'll be talking about making sense of the universe through multi messenger astronomy. Basically, he's saying that we are, since we are now living in the age of multi messenger astrophysics, where we are able to detect different signals coming to use from the universe, I mean, Susah juga nak sebut semua benda ni. Okay. And he will basically explore one way in which we are able to detect one messenger, which is the gravitational waves. So without further ado, let us all welcome Mr. Afik Abdul Hamid. Mic test, one, two. Can you hear me? Can you see me in the back? Can you touch, taste, or smell me? Just kidding, don't do that. <laughs> to see, to hear, to touch, taste, and smell, the five senses through which we experience the world around us. Now, I'm not a biologist, I'm an astronomer, but what if I told you that the ways through which we are able to understand the universe have expanded beyond the singular sense of sight? What am I talking about? I'm talking about astrophysical messengers, cosmic mailmen that penetrate through the depths of infinity to deliver us information on incredible things like exploding stars and colliding black holes that we would otherwise be blind to if we only looked at light alone. Now, beyond light, our senses on the universe have grown to incorporate cosmic rays, gravitational waves, and neutrinos, tiny elusive particles that are right now shooting through you and me as I speak. I won't be talking about all three of these messengers, but I will talk about gravitational waves because of their unique ability to bring people together and also push them apart at the same time. Right, so super massive black holes. There's one in the heart of every galaxy and somewhere in the universe right now, two galaxies are merging to become one. And as they do so, their colliding supermassive black holes emit vibrations of space-time that very subtly change the distance between you and me by a fraction the width of an atom. That's comparable in relative size and scale to the monthly savings of your average fresh graduate in today's economy. <laughs> now, there's an incredible astrophysical experiment that we can do to detect these space-time vibrations by observing the most elegant dancers of the universe, Pulsars are rotating neutron stars that emit beams of radiation that sweep across our line of sight. By comparing the deviations of the expected time for which these beams sweep for pulsars in one part of the sky versus those in another part of the sky, we can tune in to a cosmic choir of colliding galaxies that will allow us to further validate Einstein's theories of gravity and to unlock the true nature of black holes. But interstellar matter kind of delays these signals and we have to compensate for this very small delay, just like how you might compensate for a friend who is delayed because of bad weather. That was my part of the research, but whatever. <laughs> now what's all of this worth, you may wonder? What can it give us beyond even more mysteries to power the growth of more science, technology, art, and human curiosity? Well, I don't think even Einstein knew the answer to that, but I'll tell you what. Come with me and let's find out. <laughs> oh, thank, thank you, you Afik. I, I'm sure I'm going to follow you if the price to go to space is cheap. Lah. But nevertheless, let us turn our attention to the judges for the q and I have so many questions, but I just have to ask one. You know I love you, right? Love you too, sir. <laughs> no, because if you don't know it yet, Afik is an all-star. He keeps on returning, and I respect him for that. But I do have to ask you a question. Since, you know, Supermassive Black Hole is a song that I like so much. But I want to ask you about time. Right. Because of the oscillatory effect that it can have on the clock or whatever it is, do you think that even though it's invisible, but gravitational waves can actually unlock the mystery of time, whether traveling backwards or to the future. Because okay. we do have a futurist inside the audience and here, but they cannot tell me about time. Okay. Can you tell me about GW and the possibility of unlocking time? 
Okay, uh, that's a very interesting question because uh, as I was doing this internship with this Polish university, my supervisor at the time, I learned something very valuable. The two most important parameters in all of physics are mass and time. Okay, these are the two most important things. Uh, and I have to address the fact that uh, gravitational waves are a spatial effect. Suppose there was a gravitational wave uh, passing from the ceiling into the floor, right? Uh, my, the proper distance between me and that point through which it goes to the ground will kind of like be pushed back and come forward. It's a stretching and squeezing effect, right? So like I said, it can bring people together <laughs> and it can also push them apart. So I'll find that the distance from that point will kind of very slowly change and that's, it's more of a spatial effect. But uh, time uh, is definitely dilated near the, the black hole itself. And this is the thing about the black hole community. Uh, they study different parts of the black holes. Some people study the, the radio jets that come out of the black hole as it's eating, you know, uh, accreting the matter around it. Some people study the gravitational effects. It, there, there's a little joke which goes like, it's like a bunch of people studying elephants with their eyes closed. Some of them kind of touch the trunk and it feels a certain way. Some of them touch the ears and it feel, feels a certain way. So black holes are a mystery and we're still trying to figure it out. But just like a baby, we don't know what it's for. The return on investment is not here, but it will come to us in 100 years from now. I promise. <laughs> so science haven't answered that. Right? It's at the forefront. Yes. Like, but we're getting there. We're getting there. Probably through your research. Thank you. Uh, I'm the gravitational wave kind of I'm pulsar timing, you know. <laughs> okay, go on. I'll, go on. I'll do a quick one then. Okay, so other than what you just said about time, what is an example that you can offer of how the detection of gravitational waves offer fresh ways of looking at the universe that would be of interest to the average person, a non-astrophysicist. You are obviously extremely enthusiastic about uh, you know, your, your topic. Um, kind of goes over my head somewhat. So it's like, you know, why should I, why should I care? Okay, uh, because of something that might matter to our descendants uh, millions of years from now. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that very famous a uh, screensaver on the Mac, right, if, of the Andromeda galaxy. Have you guys, raise your hand if you've seen it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just flat there, it's Andromeda, it's beautiful in all of its glorious wonder. Uh, Andromeda and the Milky Way are on a collision course together and in, within, I think, millions or billions of years they will merge and that's what we're looking at, mergers between galaxies. And when galaxies merge, they start to emit gravitational waves. Uh, that, I think, is a very beautiful picture and one that we are only beginning to unlock in today's age of multi-messenger astrophysics. Good All catch, right. Thank you, Afik, our astronomer. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you so much. Okay, okay. All right. <laughs> he, was, when he, were, he said something like about Milky Way and Andromeda. Milky Way, the only thing I know about Milky Way is the chocolate. But at least with Afik, I know Milky Way is all about our universe and whatnot. And hopefully, he'll be the first of many astronomers out there, Malaysians, who'll be fronting, uh, looking into space and what, does, what, what space can offer. Space, the final frontier, actually is the next frontier. Right, thank you so much, Afik. Thank you for getting the ping pong balls back. <laughs>